Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive. You all shared some really interesting thoughts from Kartik about technological progress. Yeah. And uh, whether it peaked with the moon landing in 1969. Mm. And it seems like a lot of you are, are intrigued by this idea. It's a really thought-provoking question. Yeah, and he had a really surprising metric to back up his argument, too. Right. Skyscraper. Skyscrapers of all things. Yeah, you don't often think of those two things together, do you? No, not really. Yeah. So how does he connect those two seemingly very different ideas. Well, what Kartik does really well is challenge our assumptions about how we measure progress. Okay. You know, we tend to focus on those big splashy events. Right, the moon landing. Exactly. A huge achievement. A moon shot. But he's saying, hey, let's look at the bigger picture. Right. The trends, the, the things that unfold over decades. The things that are maybe less flashy, but ultimately have a much greater impact on our lives. Okay, so he's arguing that these skyscrapers are a better representation of that kind of sustained progress than something like the Apollo program. Exactly. Because when you think about it, the moon landing was a massive undertaking. Yeah, 400,000 people involved. Right. A huge percentage of the U.S. GDP for, what, eight years? Yeah, it was an outlier even for its time. Mm. And you could argue that its impact on subsequent progress is debatable. Okay, so in a way, it was kind of a one-off. In a way. Whereas skyscrapers... Well, they represent something very different. Okay. They're driven by market forces. Not government funding. Right. Like the moon landing. Exactly. <laughs> They're a response to economic pressures and opportunities, mm. a reflection of what's happening in the private sector. So you're saying they're a more organic form of progress? More organic, mm. more sustainable. They emerge from a confluence of factors. Okay, like what kind of factors? Well, think about it. To build a skyscraper... You need incredibly strong yet lightweight materials. Okay. You need innovative designs to withstand things like wind loads and seismic activity. Right. And you need sophisticated systems to move people up and down all those floors efficiently. Like elevators and stuff. Exactly. So each skyscraper is kind of like this this marker of all these interconnected advancements. It's, it's like a visible timeline of technological progress <laughs> etched into the skyline. I like that. A visible timeline of technological progress. And here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. This visual timeline, it's not just about height. It's about geography, too. Okay. The distribution of skyscrapers across the globe tells a story about economic development. So where we see the most skyscrapers tells us something about... About who's leading the charge in innovation and growth. That makes sense. And he actually mentioned a, a pretty striking statistic. Oh, yeah. 99% of all skyscrapers 99%. were built after the moon landing. Think about that for a second. Wow. Yeah, that really puts it into perspective. It does. It reframes our whole understanding of when and where progress happened. So we're talking about a very different world. Completely. Back right. then in 1969. Kartik actually uses Los Angeles as an example. Yeah. He describes the 1969 L.A. skyline. Pretty much non-existent. Yeah. Virtually no skyscrapers. A far cry from what we see today. And what about other cities? Like Chicago was Chicago a skyscraper city back then? Chicago in 1970. Yeah. Well, it had a handful of tall buildings. Okay. But nothing compared to the forest of skyscrapers we see today. So really a completely different world. It's a powerful visual, isn't it? The mm -hmm. skyline is a barometer of progress. Yeah, it is. I'm starting to see it now. It tells us a story about economic trajectories, mm -hmm. technological capabilities. It really does paint a picture. Even cultural aspirations. Mm. I never thought of it that way. It's all right there in the skyline. But couldn't this be misleading in a way? How so? I mean, aren't skyscrapers also often seen as a symbol of oh. inequality? Ah, I see what you're getting at. You know, these luxury penthouses towering over yeah. the struggles of everyday people. That's a valid point. Mm -hmm. And it's something we need to be mindful of. Skyscrapers can exacerbate existing inequalities. That's true. Right. But they also represent an attempt to address the challenges of growing urban populations. Mm -hmm. Go for that. To create space for businesses, residences, cultural institutions. Within a limited area. Right. So it's not so simple. Not at all. Skyscrapers embody both the progress and the potential pitfalls of urban development. I see what you mean. They're complex symbols. They really are. They reflect our ingenuity and ambition, but also remind us of the work we still need to do to create more equitable and sustainable cities. That's a good way to put it. 
And speaking of challenges, mm-hmm. Cardick mentioned that even older cities like London, mm-hmm. you know, with their long histories and... Established architectural style. Yeah, are now embracing skyscraper construction. It's an interesting trend, isn't it? It is. What do you make of that? Well, I think it suggests that the technology has reached a certain level of... Maturity. Maturity, cost effectiveness, even affordability. So even cities that might have been resistant to skyscrapers in the past... Are now seeing the value. Right. Both economic and practical. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. It is. We've been so focused on those moonshot moments. Yeah. That we've missed this steady, quiet revolution happening right in our skylines. And that's exactly Cardick's point. Right. Look beyond the singular event. Recognize the ongoing, the incremental advancements. The things that are shaping our world every single day. Exactly. So are we missing other skyscrapers in different fields? Hmm, that's a great question. Are there other unconventional indicators of progress that we should be paying attention to? That's what we need to figure out. Okay, so we've got a lot more to unpack here. We do. And we'll dive into those questions in just a moment. That was good. It really is amazing to think about how all these different pieces fit together. It is. You know how these advancements in one area can kind of spark new possibilities in other fields? It's like a chain reaction of innovation. Exactly. So if skyscrapers are this barometer of progress, where else might we be missing these quiet revolutions? Well, let's stick with this theme of interconnected advancements for a moment. Okay. Remember how we talked about high-strength steel and curtain wall technology? Yeah. Those innovations didn't happen in isolation. Right. They were part of a larger... Network of progress. Exactly. Right. For example, advancements in computer-aided design. CAD. Right. CAD allowed Mm -hmm. architects to create much more complex and daring designs for skyscrapers. Okay. And those designs, in turn, push engineers to develop new construction techniques and materials to actually realize those visions. So it's like a feedback loop. Exactly. Each innovation sparks new possibilities in other fields. And this loop extends beyond the construction industry, too. Oh, okay. How so? Well, think about the impact of skyscrapers on transportation. Okay. The development of high-speed elevators, for example, wasn't just about moving people up and down faster. Yeah. It was about enabling the very existence of super-tall buildings. Wow. I never thought of it that way. It's like the technology and the built environment co-evolved. Yeah, that's fascinating. And this co-evolution extends even further. Think about the energy demands of skyscrapers. Oh, yeah, good point. They've driven innovations in energy efficiency, from smart lighting systems to advanced HVAC technologies. It's amazing to think about how all these seemingly disparate fields are actually all interconnected. It is. And let's not forget about the social and cultural impact of skyscrapers either. Oh, right. They've become these icons of urban life. Symbols of ambition and progress. They really have. They've inspired new forms of art photography, even literature. Yeah, it's true. They capture the imagination in a way that few other structures can. Exactly. And this imaginative power is another indicator of their significance. Okay, so we've talked about how skyscrapers are these microcosms of progress. Reflecting advancements in all these different fields. But what about other areas? Where else might we be overlooking these quiet revolutions? Hmm. Well, let's think about healthcare, for example. Oh. We often hear about those groundbreaking medical discoveries. Yeah, like new cancer treatments or gene therapies. Right. But what about the less glamorous but equally important advancements in areas like medical imaging or diagnostics? Those are good points. Those advancements might not make headlines. Sure. But they're making a huge difference in people's lives every day. Exactly. Hmm. Think about the evolution of imaging technology mm. from X rays to CT scans to MRIs. Right. We've seen incredible progress in our ability to visualize the human body yeah, and diagnose diseases much earlier and more accurately. And those advancements have been driven by innovations in fields like computer science, material science, even physics. Right? Oh, absolutely. It's another example of that chain reaction of innovation with advancements in one field feeding into progress in another. And this interconnectedness is really a hallmark of progress itself. So it's not just a straight line. Not at all. It's more like a complex web of interconnected advancements. I like that, a web of interconnected advancements. So it's like we're constantly building on the foundations. Laid by those who came before us. Yeah, each generation adding its own layer of knowledge and innovation. It is. And that's a really inspiring thought, isn't it? It suggests that progress is this ongoing process. Yeah. A collective endeavor that spans generations and disciplines. Absolutely. 
It's not just about the big eureka moments, no. but about the steady accumulation of knowledge. The constant refinement. Yeah, the incremental improvements that over time lead to transformative change. What other areas do you think we should consider? Well, let's not forget about the digital realm. The internet itself is a testament to the power of quiet revolutions. That's true. It's easy to take the internet for granted now. It is. But its impact on communication, commerce culture. It's been huge. Yeah, nothing short of revolutionary. And this revolution is still ongoing. Yeah. Think about the advancements in artificial intelligence, the rise of cloud computing, the development of blockchain technology. Right. These are all quietly reshaping our world in really profound ways. And these advancements are often driven by open source collaboration, right? Yeah. By the sharing of knowledge and ideas across borders and institutions. It's a very different model of progress than, say, the top-down government-funded approach that led to the moon landing. It is. So you're saying this more distributed, collaborative model of progress. I think it's likely to become even more prevalent in the future. As access to information and technology continues to expand. Right. We'll see more and more people contributing to the advancement of knowledge and innovation. It's like the barriers to entry are being lowered, allowing for a greater diversity of voices and perspectives. And that can only be a good thing. Yeah, it's certainly a cause for optimism. The more ah. people who are empowered to contribute to progress. The more likely we are to find solutions to the challenges facing humanity. So what does this all mean for us as individuals? Hmm. How can we become more attuned to these quiet revolutions happening all around us? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. And it's one we should explore as we wrap up our deep dive. Okay. But before we do, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What's resonated with you most about this conversation so far? You know what's really hit home for me is how easily we get caught up in the hype of the next big thing. Yeah. And completely miss those subtle but significant advancements happening right under our noses. It's so easy to focus on the spectac those big breakthroughs. Right. But real progress, it often happens quietly, incrementally. Yeah, it's like that saying, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Exactly. We love to celebrate reaching the destination. A finish line. But it's that steady, often unseen progress along the way. That really makes the difference. So how do we become more attuned to these quiet revolutions? Hmm. Well, one way is to just start paying attention to the things we take for granted. Okay. Like, think about the evolution of everyday objects. Like our phones. Sure. The smartphones we carry, the appliances in our homes, the cars we drive. Yeah. All of these things represent the culmination of countless innovations, both big and small. Wow. Yeah, I've never really thought about it that way. Even something as simple as refrigerator. Right. It's undergone incredible transformations over the past century. That's a good point. So by understanding the history of these objects. By tracing those lineages of innovation. We gain a deeper appreciation for the process of progress itself. Exactly. Yeah. We start to see that interconnectedness of everything. Yeah. The way advancements in one field ripple outward influencing and inspiring progress in other areas. So it's about looking for those connections. The patterns of innovation. Yeah, and I guess this approach applies to just about any field, right? Absolutely. Whether it's technology, healthcare education, even art, mm. the key is to cultivate a sense of curiosity. Okay. A habit of asking why. Why are things the way they are? Right. How did we get here? What were the challenges? What were the breakthroughs? It's about being curious. Digging a little deeper. Looking for those aha moments that reveal the hidden stories of progress. And you're saying those stories are all around us. Everywhere. Just waiting to be discovered. In the objects we use, the systems we interact with, the ideas we encounter. It's like we're surrounded by these invisible threads of progress. Weaving together the fabric of our world. And by paying attention to them. Understanding how they connect. We can get a much richer perspective on the trajectory of human ingenuity. And that perspective can be really empowering. How so? Well, it reminds us that progress isn't something that just happens to us. Right. It's something we actively participate in. Yeah, we can all contribute in our own way. Exactly. So if there was one thing you'd want our listeners to take away from this deep dive, what would it be? I think it would be this progress isn't always about giant leaps. Or those headline-grabbing breakthroughs. Right. It's often about the accumulation of small steps. Those quiet revolutions. That unfold over time sometimes without us even noticing. And by being more attuned to them. By recognizing the interconnectedness of it all. We can really gain a deeper appreciation for human ingenuity. For resilience. And for our boundless potential. And who knows, maybe we'll even find some inspiration to contribute to that progress in our own unique ways. Uh, Love that. 
Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. It's been a pleasure. As always, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive.